Hello, I'm Dr. Marty Ross. In this video, I talk about coronavirus and Lyme disease. I talk about Lyme immune dysregulation and how it may impact your ability to handle coronavirus. I describe techniques you can use to prevent getting the coronavirus. And finally, I describe immune boosting techniques that you can use that may help your ability to deal with this infection. Treat Lyme is supported by purchases you make through Marty Ross MD supplements. Now, what about the person with Lyme? Does the person with Lyme have some reason to be more concerned than the person that doesn't have Lyme? Because, you know, people with Lyme, um, for some people with Lyme, there is immune dysregulation and it may make it difficult. In theory, it could make it difficult for their immune system to handle this. And so they may be a person that might have more problems. Okay. Some people wonder that. Okay. What I will tell you is we have, um, although people with Lyme may have immune dysregulation, that is because the Lyme germ is releasing chemicals into the body to prevent the immune system from going after it. Okay. All right. The Lyme germ is, may not be causing universal suppression or dysregulation of the immune system against other germs. It may be just against the Lyme germ. For instance, in my practice, I do not see that people that have flu or that people with Lyme tend to get the flu at an any greater frequency than people that don't have Lyme. In my practice, I tend to see that people that get the flu that have Lyme um, do not have any worse outcome than people that don't have the flu, all right? So although Lyme can cause some immune dysregulation, that does not necessarily mean it is immune dysregulation against all infections, okay? All right, so that's kind of some background on it, okay? So what do you do? All right, so what do you do? So again, I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you from a place where we're currently having a, a small outbreak, all right? So the first thing you want to do is you want to limit your ability to get it, all right? All right. And so what that means is you want to decrease your chances of getting it, all right? So what public health officials tell us, and I agree with this, is one of the ways to do that is stand at least three feet to six feet away from people that appear to be ill that might be coughing or sneezing stand away from them, get away from them, okay? Because when they're coughing or sneezing, they may be um, shooting out respiratory droplets that contain some of the virus. But if you're standing at least three to six feet back, your chances of getting those respiratory droplets on you goes down greatly, okay? So number one, create distance. Number two, wash your hands a lot, a lot, okay? And that means washing your hands with hot water and soap. You don't necessarily need these fancy hand sanitizers, okay? The act of scrubbing your hands with regular soap and water removes bacteria, and you wanna scrub them for 20 minutes, all right? So throughout the day, especially if you've been outside, out of your normal living environment, when you come back, wash your hands, all right? Here in my office, I wash my hands very frequently, all right, all right? And the reason you're doing that is you're washing off any contact with the virus that you might have had, okay? Number three, avoid touching your face, your eyes, your nose, your mouth with your hands, okay? Now, why is that? Well, with your hands, if you're out in the world, you may be touching surfaces that somebody sneezed or coughed on that have some of these respiratory droplets of viruses, all right? But if you, if you then wind up touching them to your eyes, your mouth, and your nose, those are the places that you get entry of the virus into the body. So if you limit touching your face in those areas, you then limit the chances of getting it, okay? All right, so in terms of what to do about it, number one, try not to get it, all right? So stand away from people, wash your hands frequently, and then limit contact to your face uh, to get the, uh, um, so that you don't necessarily transmit it through touching your hands to your mucous membranes, okay? All right, finally, the other thing that you, um, another thing that you might want to do is lifestyle things, okay? So keep in mind, your immune system is what's going to have to deal with this, all right? And I'm going to say more about the immune system here in a minute. But there's some good lifestyle measures that help your immune system do well. One of those is get seven to nine hours of sleep. Now, don't forget to do that. Even with all the fear about this coronavirus, get sleep, okay? Number two, try to lower stress and anxiety and emotional toxins in your life. 
stress, anxiety, and emotional toxins are some of the biggest suppressors of your immune system. And no matter what you take to boost your immune system, if you are living in stress, constant anxiety, and fear, that may suppress your immune system in a way that the immune system is going to have a hard time fighting this, okay? So find things that give you joy. Um, meditate if that works for you. Talk to a counselor. Visit with friends. Visiting with friends is a way of adding joy into our life, okay? But find ways to de-stress and detoxify emotional toxins in your life, all right? All right. So then the third thing that people can consider doing is to try to boost the part of the immune system that will have to confront this virus if you should happen to get it, all right? All right. So let me talk about that. So our immune systems can be divided into two parts. There's something called the innate immune system. And then there's another part of the immune system that I'll call the adaptive or the, the part of the immune system that has learned to treat infections before, okay? So the innate immune system is the part of the immune system that basically is what deals with viruses and bacteria that we have never learned to fight before, all right? And it includes things like your skin that acts as a barrier, your mucous membranes, and that it includes also a number of immune cells like macrophages, natural killer cells, something called dendritic cells, and a group of cells called uh, phagocytes, okay? And there are some things that we know from the flu and other viruses that we can do to turn on the innate immune system, all right? Now, the innate immune system compares with the acquired immune system or the learned immune system, okay? All right, so that part of the immune system is made up of white blood cells like T cells, and it's also made up of antibodies. So for instance, when you get a vaccine, it is triggering the acquired immune system. Your immune system will wind up making antibodies against that thing you get a vaccine for, okay? And your immune system that currently helps you deal with the Lyme infection that's in you is the acquired immune system, which is a separate arm of the immune system than this innate immune system, okay? So if I've looked at the sciences, I've looked at this and I've looked at flu and I've looked at other viruses, we can learn some things. So here's some things that can help with your innate immune system. Number one, vitamin A, 5,000 international units a day, reinforces and makes stronger your ability of your mucous membranes, like your nose, your mouth, and your lungs to fight and keep infections out, okay? Vitamin A, 5,000 international units a day. Second thing is vitamin D. And I usually suggest people take 5,000 international units a day of that. And what vitamin D does is it regulates inflammation in the immune system. It also turns on the innate immune system's ability to make um, antiviral and antibiotic proteins that attack germs, okay? If we look at studies about the flu, as an example, people that take vitamin D supplementation regularly going into the flu, if they get the flu, they have a 50% reduction in the severity of the symptoms compared to people that don't take vitamin D, okay? Now, one caution about vitamin D, you can get toxic on it. So uh, probably after a month or six weeks of taking 5,000 international units a day, you want to get your vitamin D levels checked and you want to try to keep them somewhere between 50 and 80. And I, I have this written down. Okay. All right. Another thing that you could consider doing is to take a product made by research nutritionals called transfer factor multi-immune. So transfer factors are proteins that will turn on certain cells in the immune system. And this transfer factor multi-immune is designed to turn on one of the innate immune cells called natural killer cells, okay? And Research Nutritionals has done a limited study looking at this and they found that their product increases natural killer cell activity by 600%, okay? That's pretty good. And so I usually would suggest a person takes that as one pill two times a day. One other group of chemicals that has been shown to turn on a majority of the cells in the innate immune system, like macrophages, phagocytes, dendritic cells, and even natural killer cells, are what are called beta-glucans. Beta-glucans are sugars that are found in mushrooms, okay? So I also suggest that people take a type of mushroom called reishi mushrooms, 400 milligrams, one pill, three times a day, all right? And then finally, 
there is some compelling evidence that shows if you raise glutathione levels that your dendritic immune cells, the dendritic innate immune cells that are part of that barrier that help fight viruses for the first time, that they will function better. And so there are ways you can do that. You can either take N-acetylcysteine, which is a building block for glutathione, 500 milligram pill three times a day, or you can take a liposomal variety of glutathione like a Research Nutritionals Trifortify product, and I would do one teaspoon one time a day, all right? So if you wanna throw the whole full court press at things you can do to boost your innate immune system, you would do vitamin A, 5,000 international units a day, vitamin D, 5,000 international units a day, um, transfer factor multi-immune, one pill twice a day, reishi mushrooms, 400 milligrams, three times a day, and you would either do N-acetylcysteine or glutathione, all right? That's if you wanna do everything, okay? Now, do I have any proof that this works in people with Lyme and coronavirus? The answer is no, because we have no research on it. However, what I can tell you, the research that shows that these do help the innate immune system work better, which is your first line against these new viruses, it's pretty compelling. This is what turns on the innate immune system, okay? If resources are an issue, I would focus on the vitamin D. I would focus on either taking transfer factor multi-immune or taking the reishi mushrooms. And then I would take either the N-acetylcysteine and the glutathione, all right? So those are my ideas. I know it's a lot of information. I have written it down, but I just want to try to dispel. There's a lot of myth and hype out there right now and fear going on about something that the majority of people, even with Lyme, will handle very well. I wanted to say that, okay? The death rate that supposedly is out there, 1.4 to 3.4% is very inflated. I think it's gonna be a lot lower than that. And I think that we know at least even out of China that the majority of people, this is a minor to a moderate infection. Um, and I, I just wanna let people know that as well too, okay? All right, and then practice good public health measures like washing your hands, standing away from people that might be infectious and stop touching your, your face with your hands frequently, okay? Finally, don't forget to do the lifestyle things about getting sleep and de-stressing, okay?